you, and then you're just going to, uh, you're going to introduce yourself. So, uh, can you tell us your name? I'm, my name is Sumeda Kanna. And so, um, can you tell us your profession? I'm a medical doctor. I'm a retired person, OBGYN specialist, and also I did public health specialty. And, and you did public health, though, internationally? I did, yes. I was working in obstetrics and gynecology practice in, in London, and also I did my medical graduate degree in India. I'm originally from India, and then I did my postgraduate. Where, health where in India? In in Delhi. Oh, okay. And then I did my postgraduate studies in OBGYN in England, and then I got motivated to uh, learn more about the social aspects of obstetrics, so why women die before they give birth or during pregnancy, what are some of the conditions that they feel, because I had seen uh, women in in difficult situations in countries where there's not not many facilities, so so I I did my public health uh, majoring in maternal child health and population dynamics in the University of Pittsburgh in USA. That brought me here to this country. University of Pittsburgh. All right. So um, didn't you tell me years and years ago that you had worked with the World Health Organization or no? Yes, I did. Oh. I was one of the few young obstetrics gynecology. A, a, a trained physician with complete training in contraceptive techniques and, and maternal health in developing countries. So I, at that time, there was a need for that kind of a person to work in the Caribbean and Latin American countries to help to train doctors and nurses in mm. um, in contraceptive techniques and in, in, in also in social aspects of maternal care. So you so set up those clinics? I, yeah, or you that's were... how I ah. got into the World Health. They approached me to, to take a two-year assignment in the Caribbean to train their doctors and nurses. Uh, how lucky, them. the Caribbean. Yeah, it was, I spent seven years in the Caribbean countries, although went for two years, but it just continued after that. Oh, beautiful. And, and I had get an opportunity to work in other Latin American countries and Asian countries and, and some African countries. Amazing. Yeah, I but, so admire you. Um, now, how did you find your way to uh, Thomas Ayurveda? Well, I am a great believer in 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 uh, tr what we don't, I don't like to call them traditional medicine. I call them more wisdom medicines uh, rather than just the conventional medicine that I was trained in. Coming from India, I, I was aware of Ayurveda as as a as a scientific way of uh, dealing with human body, and but I had not myself been trained into it. So when um, I felt I needed, I, I was studying different systems of healing during when I retired from WHO and I learned a little bit more about Ayurveda and so a friend of mine told me I was having some kind of chronic pains and I, so I, a friend of mine told me about Dr. Helen Thomas and I said, okay, that's how I found her. And, and you were practicing in Gualala, right? That's right. I had yeah. a center called the Healing Well. It was a center for... Um, helping women to um, to take care of themselves. Uh, it was more of a wellness type of uh, oh, center beautiful. for um, uh, teaching women integrating body, mind, service practices in their daily life. And so I was very much uh, working with women, older women mostly, women midlife and beyond. So, uh, so I was very fortunate that I, I was told about, uh, it was almost 10, 12 years ago, I think. Yeah, it was uh, a while ago. Yeah, yeah. about Dr. Thomas. And uh, and you got to meet Dr. Pensi, who was is one of my Ayurvedic teachers from India. That's right. right. I you, did. I had that yeah. uh, honor. And although I've not visited any of the centers in India, Ayurvedic centers, I've just not had that opportunity. But I have, um, I have I'm a great... Um, admirer and believer in, in Ayurvedic medicine because I feel that even though the conventional medicine in which I was trained uh, has been has made great strides in terms of saving people in emergency in Absolutely. surgery yeah. in, in diagnostic techniques there's no question um, but it it is not making as good a progress in in managing 
chronic conditions that more and more people as we get older get into also pain you know and and they deal with organs and and specific parts of the body whereas the ayurveda um, deals with the person as a whole and then and looks at what is creating the imbalance rather than a particular organ or a particular system and i think that's that is what it draws me to, to something like Ayurveda, and and I admire Dr. Thomas's work because she um, she just puts your hand on your pulse and and she immediately knows what's out of balance, and I think that is just so wonderful, and and she finds a gentle way of how to bring about balance. Uh, it's not something that is magical, you know. What unfortunately people working with Western medicine. They just think one pill and it will take care of your headache or take care of your pain. Yeah. It may do so for a few minutes or for an hour or for half and a half a day, but it does not remove the problem. And I think that this is what, what Ayurveda does. It, it, it makes you aware of yourself and your body and what you need to do to bring it into balance. And that takes time. It takes a personal interest, a personal engagement with one's uh, daily life and one's body and mind. Yes, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sumita. You're Thank welcome. you.